Your team is doing the best they can to stay positive and productive during the COVID-19 crisis. It's your responsibility as the leader to help them be better. Stay tuned for ideas you can use right now. Hello, I'm Randy Pennington. Thanks for joining the conversation. Two weeks ago, I shared ideas for leading your team in a time of crisis. And then last week, you received ideas for managing and leading your associates who are now working from home. The links to those videos are in the description below. As this video was being recorded, layoffs are hitting the U.S. economy as more restrictions for movement are being placed on everyone. By the time it airs, we could be well on our way to a dramatic restructuring of the workplace. You might already be noticing a downturn in your business. Some of my small service business clients are entering what should be the busiest part of their year and the phone isn't ringing just quite as much. And some organizations, on the other hand, are busier than ever. Grocery stores are hiring like crazy in many areas of the country. Amazon is hiring 100,000 people. One of my clients in the food industry was having trouble recruiting people a month ago, and today they have all the applicants they need. In other words, the world has changed for everyone, but not necessarily in the same way. Not everyone is sheltering in place. One constant for every leader, regardless of their position, is to help everyone stay engaged, positive, and productive. Here are four specific ideas you can implement right now, regardless if your folks are working on site or remotely. All of them involve creating a flood of positive energy in your organization. First, make it safe. This is the third time I've said this in a video. Flood your workforce and customers with concern for their safety and well-being. Second, flood your team with your attention and transparency. I know you have a lot of work and decisions that require you to be in an office or a conference room. That's not an excuse. You have to be even more visible and vocal in a crisis. And if you don't, rumors will start to circulate that take the team off track and suck the energy that's already lagging from the team. Be honest and transparent about what you do know and can share and what you don't know and can't share. Keep everyone informed about the state of the business and your hopes for the future. You are going to be asked about your plans for layoffs. There's a big difference in how you answer that question based on being a private or a public company and your position in the company. Unless you're the owner or CEO, you should check with those in charge for the specific language they want you to use. If you're a public company, you can't talk about layoff plans in public because any information could have an impact on the stock price. But a general response to your team that acknowledges your awareness that it's a concern is usually okay. You can also let people know that you'll be as open and transparent as you can based on when the company makes a decision and communicates it to everyone. This might not be the response your team wants, but if you've invested in building great relationships and credibility, they'll understand. Just make sure to remind them that the one thing they can control is how they show up, perform, and contribute every day. You have more latitude if you're the owner of a privately held company. And even then, you should have a plan. And if you don't, and your company is suffering from the economic downturn, you should develop one right now before you need it. Overall, flooding the organization with visibility and communication reinforces that you want people to know everything they can about what's going on that will potentially affect their lives. This strategy is equally important if your business is stable or even growing in the midst of crisis. You see, it's normal for everyone to have questions and be a little apprehensive, even if things are going well. The crisis in the world is affecting your team even if it isn't touching your business. The third idea is to flood the organization with positive recognition. Celebrate every positive piece of news or result. 
And I recently spoke with one client about installing a bell that anyone could ring any time something positive happens in their operation. You want to keep everyone focused and aware that great work is being done and everyone is contributing to success. You can also start your staff meetings with everyone recognizing someone else or sharing good things that are happening with them. Or run a continuous stream of accomplishments on your internal communication network or on the screens in your break room. The fourth idea is to flood the business with good ideas to improve. This will require every team leader, supervisor, and manager to be open and accepting of new ideas as it comes at them. If your organization runs Kaizen events, then have more of them. If you don't run those events, I'll post a link in the description to give you some ideas. You can also leave me a message here and I'll respond with some things to consider. Success energizes everyone, and every opportunity to save money, improve quality, enhance the customer experience, and increase revenue creates buy-in and commitment. There will be some suggestions that can't be done, but supervisors and managers should coach people to make better decisions and recommendations rather than shutting them down. That's it for this episode. I'll be back next week with more ideas on how to lead during this crisis. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to never miss new content just as soon as it's released. Also, please share this with your friends and other leaders in your organization. Give us a like or comment with your ideas and questions. We really do appreciate it. And remember, the heroes in every marketplace are known by their results, and leaders are known by their ability to positively influence others. Now is the time to lead. I'll see you soon.